वेलकम टू दिस एपिसोड ऑफ द हरप्रीत सिंह शो आज दे सेगमेंट विच तोडी मुलाकात करवा जा रहे हैं फिजी हिस्टोरिक सोसाइटी तो आए हुए साडे मेहमान इमाद अली नाल इना नाल गल बात करके जानकारी लवांगे कि ए सोसाइटी की करदी है फिजियन लोग जड़े हैं कदों इस मुल्क च आए थे उनकी की कंट्रीब्यूशन है इस देश में स्वागत करते हैं इमाद अली दा वेलकम टू प्रोग्राम थैंक यू थैंक यू फिजी हिस्टोरिक सोसाइटी टेल अस यू आर अ मेंबर ऑफ दिस सोसाइटी व्हाट इज दिस व्हाट डज दिस सोसाइटी डू या इट्स अ इंटरनेशनल सोसाइटी ऑफ मेंबर्स फ्रॉम अक्रॉस एक्चुअली द ग्लोब मेनली फ्रॉम द फिजी एंड डायस्पोरा बट नॉट नॉट जस्ट फ्रॉम एंड इट्स दोस ऑफ अस हु आर इंटरेस्टेड इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ फिजी इट्स फैसिनेटिंग हिस्ट्री एंड व्हाट वी डू इज वी कम्युनिकेट ऑनलाइन एंड वी गेट आर्काइव्स एंड वी ट्रैवल एंड to get come together to really share this history so we can share it with future generations. Oh that's wonderful. So it's just confined to BC or it's a Canadian wide uh, society. It's actually uh we have members uh here in BC but uh, a lot of people from New Zealand, Australia, okay. the UK and we communicate as well. Oh that's wonderful. So in Canada approximately how many Fijians are there and when did uh, the Fijian people start arriving over here? Well, uh there's just about uh, well, over 30,000. I mean, we don't have an exact number because right. the census data is still coming in, okay. but there are over 30,000. The majority of them live in the lower mainland, but right. there are small pockets in uh, Edmonton, Calgary as well as Toronto. Mm -hmm. Um the arrival of Fijians is actually an interesting story because it doesn't happen all in one go. Right. It happened over over time. Uh the first record of any Fijians we have or any people from Fiji were from 1908. Okay. And the reason why we have record of them arriving mm -hmm. uh is because they actually went to court along with some people from India okay. uh to fight basically for the right to stay in Canada. Okay. So at that time it was not easy for people from the Indian subcontinent or for basically um non-white immigration in Canada it was not easy. Right. Um there were some laws that were set up the right mm -hmm. of the law of continuous passage. I mean remember this is only a few years before Komagata Maru. Right. And what happens is a a group of Indian immigrants mm -hmm. so people from India went to court to challenge this uh, among those were actually three men from Fiji uh, as well Indian immigrants um uh, we know that um they were from different backgrounds okay. different parts of India uh so some of them were from Punjab some of them were from South India right. and they had come to Vancouver uh through their uh, residency in Fiji mm -hmm. and were fighting for that right so that those were the first ones that we know of in 1908 okay uh interestingly enough The next arrival of Fijian immigrants um were not here to immigrate at all but they were here on route to fight in World War 1 as part of the British Empire. Okay. And this year 19 or 2017 mm -hmm. rather marks the 100th anniversary of the arrival okay. of these Fijian soldiers. So it was around 1917 that they came away. Right. Okay. And and there was uh, just over 100 of them but 110. Okay. Uh and they came with their European generals right. and they were Itoke which is the um the indigenous people of Fiji. Okay. and they arrived and uh, there's actually a great photo of them that I've got um and they they were from uh Fiji but they had come through Hawaii to Vancouver okay. on route to Europe okay. to fight in the war and uh the the photo is a very famous photo among the Fijian community because it was taken in Stanley Park okay. of these uh native Fijian soldiers right. and uh their job was to unload trucks of munitions mm -hmm. in Europe so they went from Vancouver to Halifax Halifax to France okay. from France they were in Calais then they went to Marseille and then they went to Toronto right. which is a city in Italy and mm -hmm. that's where they fought in the war um and it's a very significant thing for the Itoke community because uh some of the people who fought in that in that group right. were from chiefly families and okay. for me it means a lot because it shows the um participation of indigenous people or non-ethnically british people right. fighting for the british empire mm -hmm. in world war 1 and mm -hmm. and after that you know we have kind of a lull in um immigration from non-european sectors okay in canada however um in 1962 the laws changed right we had um the prime minister john deefenbaker and uh, his minister ellen fairclough mm -hmm. um she changed the laws of immigration to allow immigrant immigrants from kind of non-european non-traditional right. backgrounds in that sense and in that um the first fijians started to arrive okay The first four immigrants that we know of came in 1962 okay. from Fiji. Mm -hmm. Uh two of them were from the Sikh community in Fiji. Oh. And that's significant because right. because they were from the Sikh community. Right. And Vancouver has had Sikhs here since the turn of the century. Right. 
they were able to actually find shelter because they had friends mm -hmm. from the Sikh community who were able to find them shelter within the Sikh temple. Okay. So these four first Fijian immigrants in the early 1960s ended up staying the night right. in the Sikh temple. Right. They had nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them actually went back to Fiji, but eventually all four of them and their families settled here in Vancouver. Right. And since then, the numbers slowly trickled in through the 60s, and it peaked at around 1975 of the of about uh, 2,200 Fijian immigrants, okay. and it's uh, been going on ever since. Well, that's a very interesting story, what you have how uh, the people started coming over here. And now, uh, when we talk about Fiji, you talked about the indigenous people also. If you could just tell our viewers uh, today about uh, the composition of uh, the demographics in Fiji, when you talk about the indigenous people and the local people over there. So, uh, how, w what kind of system exists over there? How aligned are the common people with the indigenous over there? Well, it's, it's interesting because, um, Indigenous Fijians, obviously, you know, uh, indigenous to that land and, right. you know, colonized by the British as right. so many other places were around the world mm -hmm. at that time. And within the British Empire, in 1833, the empire end ended slavery. Right. So the end to the uh, transatlantic slave trade in terms of the British Empire's participation. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is you have this insatiable need for labor right. because you've got colonies in the West Indies, right. colonies in the South Pacific, mm -hmm. and the British Empire has sugar and fruit all growing on these plantations in these colonies. Right. So what do you do? You need labor. One source of labor for the empire was India. India. Right. And that's why we have Indians all over the world. Right? Okay. We have Indian communities in uh, the West Indies. Mm. Um, you know, we have Indian communities in Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. Right. We have Indian communities in Fiji. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is after they have this end of slavery, they bring in Indians into indentured slave servitude. Right. So it's not the same as slavery, but some people consider it, some historians consider it kind of quasi-slavery. Right. Yeah. So in India at that time, you had these uh, young men, right, mm -hmm. the, the, this group of young men and some young women who were brought over on ships okay. to Fiji by the oh. British. Uh, most of them um, left at the port in Calcutta, but they were actually brought over all from all over India. Right. And a lot of them were actually fooled because, first of all, they don't speak English. Right. In fact, the term that, they gave, that they've given themselves is Gurmatia, okay. the Gurmat people. And Gurmat is a mispronunciation of the term agreement okay. because they didn't know how to pronounce it because they didn't right. even speak English. In fact, mm -hmm. I've seen some of the primary documents. I actually even have my, uh, my great-grandmother's um, papers from okay. when she came over um, from India, from British India right. to Fiji. And you can see that they wrote their own names. They signed their names in Hindi because they didn't right. speak English oh, at yeah. all. And so they were told a lot of the times mm -hmm. the, by, the, um, by, by the, the, the British that they would be working as police officers, they would right. be working as administrators, great office jobs, mm -hmm. and then they would work there for a few years and come back to their families. Right. Unfortunately, what happens is they're taken there, mm -hmm. they're put on these plantations. Right. They're not given uh, you know, basic human rights as, mm -hmm. as we would know them. Uh, they work for hours upon hours a day. Uh, women, if they're pregnant, they're working in the fields. Right. Uh, there was a lot of violence. Right. Um, there were crimes committed against women. Mm -hmm. um, and what would happen is, is that they would be stuck in these plantations without right. any actually exit plan to go home. Okay. And so they essentially became a colony within themselves. Right. Um, as well, the British did completely ignore the ethnic and multilingual diversity. Right. As we know, um, an Indian is not just an Indian. Right. India is made up of so many languages, Absolutely. so many religions, so many right. ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. But in Fiji, you had this amalgam. And so right. the language you may hear Fiji Indians speak, mm -hmm. it's actually an amalgam of different Indian languages. Right. Um, it's actually been studied because it's very interesting because you have all these people from different languages mm -hmm. and they kind of made this common Fiji Hindi sort of language that well, that's that really interesting what you're touching upon. Let's go for a short break. We'll be back sure. and learn more from you as Great. to the development of this kind of uh, system where people from all ethnicities are thriving in Fiji and also now in Canada. A lot of Fijians are coming, so they represent various other denominations, not just Fiji as such. We'll talk about this after this short break. Sure, thank you.
वाह भाई वाह कमाल करती मिलस्ट्रीम आटा वाले ने आ मिलस्ट्रीम मल्टीग्रेन आटा दी नई पैकिंग का बहुत ही बढ़िया है जिस विच है ब्राउन कनक काला चना सोयाबीन बाजरा अते अलसी ए सब चीजें ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਸ਼ੂਗਰ ਨੂੰ ਕੰਟਰੋਲ ਕਰਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਲਾਭਦਾਇਕ ਹਨ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਹੁਣ ਮਿਲਸਟ੍ਰੀਮ ਆਟਾ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਇਆ ਹੈ ਮਲਟੀਗ੍ਰੇਨ ਆਟਾ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਨਵੀਂ ਪੈਕਿੰਗ ਵਿੱਚ ਅੱਜ ਹੀ ਆਪਣਾ ਮਿਲਸਟ੍ਰੀਮ ਮਲਟੀਗ੍ਰੇਨ ਦਾ ਨਵਾਂ ਪੈਕ ਕਰ ਲਿਆਓ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਹੈ ਤਾਕਤ ਨਾਲ ਭਰਪੂਰ ਤੇ ਹਰ ਗ੍ਰੋਸਰੀ ਸਟੋਰ ਤੇ ਉਪਲਬਧ ਹੈ ਮਿਲਸਟ੍ਰੀਮ ਆਟਾ ਖਾਓ ਸੇਵ ਬਣਾਓ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਕੋਰ ਫਿਰ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਮਾਦ ਅਲੀ ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਂਝ ਵਾਰ ਨੇ तो ਫੀਜੀਅਨਸ ਦੀ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਿਪਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਫੀਜੀ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਲੋਕ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਏ ਅਤੇ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਇੱਥੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਇੰਟੈਂਸਿਵਡ ਲੇਬਰ ਵਾਂਗੂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕੰਮ ਕੀਤਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਭਾਰਤ ਤੋਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੀ ਨੈਸ਼ਨੈਲਿਟੀ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਸਨ ਉਹ ਫੀਜੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਗਈਆਂ ਫੀਜੀਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬ੍ਰਦਰਹੂਡ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹ ਕਾਫੀ ਫੈਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਖਾਸ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਕਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਉਪਲਬਧੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਆਓ ਇਸ ਸੰਬੰਧ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਇਮਾਦ ਅਲੀ ਨਾਲ ਸੋ ਮਤਲਬ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਟੈਲਿੰਗ ਦ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਹਾਊ ਇੰਡੀਅਨਸ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਇਮੀਗ੍ਰੇਟਡ ਟੂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਸੌਰੀ ਟੂ ਫੀਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਫਰਮ देयर ਦੇ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਓਵਰ ਹੇਅਰ ਨਾ ਮਾਈ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਵਾਸ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਆਫ ਫੀਜੀ ਐਸ ਸਚ ਸੋ ਦ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਦ ਲੋਕਲ ਪੋਪੂਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਦ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਐਂਡ ਓਵਰ ਹੇਅਰ ਆਲਸੋ ਵਾਟ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਇੰਟੀਗ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ देयर ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਦ ਫੀਜੀਅਨ ਪੀਪਲ ਥੈਮਸਲਸ ਆਰ ਦੇ ਇੰਟਰੈਕਟਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਈਚ ਅਦਰ ਦ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਹੂ ਕੇਮ ਫਰਮ ਫੀਜੀ ਟੂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਆਰ ਦੇ ਲਿਵ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਸੈਪਰੇਟਲੀ ਵਾਟ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਇੰਟਰੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ देयर Uh, well, as far as the indigenous people who uh, mm-hmm. have come from Fiji to Canada, right. um, I am happy to say that there is an integrated diaspora here. So you okay. have uh, people who moved from Fiji, um, uh, who, are, who are of the indigenous population, as mm-hmm. well as those who are from the Indian community in Fiji. Right. And they do have um, a, a lot of different uh, communications, different um, uh, uh, organizations who work together. Uh, they come together for sports a lot. Right. Uh, through soccer and through rugby and things like that. Okay. Uh, for example, the, the Fijian Prime Minister has visited uh, recently, right. and that event was put on by both the uh, indigenous community okay. and the local uh, Indian Fijian community. Right. And so I think, I think that's a, a, w- a wonderful sense of unity among the well, community. Absolutely. Uh, within What, Fiji itself, yeah. the, 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 um, the indigenous population is, is very much the majority right. still. uh but i think that they've made uh great inroads in recent years right. in terms of integration okay and as far as the achievements of the fijians are concerned in canada yeah. uh can you elaborate on that you talked about soccer you know uh, that the sport which unites all the fijians are very uh they're very much uh, into this game uh, what are the achievements of the fijians in canada which you are proud of you know there's the, i i think when i look at the fijian community um There was a study done on them in 1974. There was okay. a, um, somebody doing their masters at SFU, mm-hmm. and he decided um, to focus on immigrant communities. Right. For some reason, he chose the Fijian community, and he mm-hmm. went and he lived with them, and he he looked at you know the, their 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 flaws and their struggles and their successes. And one thing that was interesting was that within six years of moving to Canada, the majority of them, mm-hmm. despite coming from you know a relatively poor background at the time, without a lot of resources, with a lot of family here, right. they bought homes. in the lower mainland. Mm-hmm. So immediately they started establishing communities. Right. Um but the the proudest thing for me is that Fijian communi- Canadians have integrated themselves in all facets of Canadian life. Right. So uh if you look at for example the um head librarian, mm-hmm. the chief librarian of the city of Vancouver right now is from the uh, Fijian uh, community. Okay. Right? She's part Fijian. Uh right. we have uh, Fijian broadcasters on CBC. Right. Uh we've got Fijian uh members of the RCMP. Mm-hmm. Um I know of uh of Fijians who serve in the Canadian military right. very proudly. Um Bobby Singh is mm-hmm. uh is uh, uh from Fijian background. He was the first Fijian Canadian elected to any position uh when he was elected to Richmond uh, City Council. Right. Uh but he also became one of the first people to win um a Grey Cup, a Super Bowl and mm-hmm. an XFL ring and right. playing as a professional football player. So right. Um it makes me proud that we have a diverse community mm-hmm. where there is a lot of achievements right. from Fijians from different areas because essentially as a community that's what you want to do you want to have uh, an opportunity so that your future generations can go into any field Absolutely and, that's and have success that, 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 that's great achievement in all the fields you're coming for the but along with that the challenges like uh, especially for the youngsters what kind of interaction how are you trying to make them aware of
you don't get to learn about Fiji. In fact, a majority of my friends had not even heard of the place. Right. Uh, but out of my own interest, mm -hmm. I, I, I went and got some knowledge. So my, my goal is actually to pass some of this knowledge along mm -hmm. um, to younger generation, to let them know that, you know, we have our own history. Right. We have a, a, an interesting history, a unique one. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really do see kind of a curiosity um, a, a, in terms of the culture right. and in terms of the language from young people. Mm -hmm. um, so I, and I, I believe that that's not just in the Fijian community, but from all ethnic communities here right. in Canada. And when it comes to integration, we also find now Fijians uh, in all the fields, in all the functions where we are integrating into the Canadian cultural mosaic. Finally, uh, the Fijian Historic Society. What are you further planning? How are you trying to get more information and trying to uh, you know, collect those information and bring it further to the community at large? Uh, well, in 2012, I actually went to Fiji okay. uh, with my father and I got to go to uh, the, the Fiji National Archives. Right. And I, I spent um, a, a lot of time there combing out information, bringing information. Um, so the main thing I'd like to do is um, present this information to the public because it's no good sitting with me, right? right. It has to be made public. And so, um, you know, appearing on shows like, yourself, uh, like yours and, mm -hmm. and speaking with other people like yourself, um, you know, public forums, events, and that's really the way we're going to get the message out. Another right. way is going to be through social media. Right. Um, and so that's kind of our, our next step. But uh, that's mainly the world. It's a great initiative which you have undertaken and uh, really, you know, we should be proud of our history because from history we learn a lot of things and we can imbibe those good uh, qualities which our forefathers had into the further generation. Thank you very much for taking this initiative. It was a pleasure having you. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Thank you.